Do you have any idea why you were fired? Well, when I was asked uh, on December the 7th, I had no idea. I didn't find out until last week uh, when I heard testimony from a Justice Department official. Uh, and their official reason was, uh, was performance. Do you know what the unofficial reason might have been? Well, I believe, and I think all my colleagues believe, that the real reason uh, were partisan politics. What was the reason then partisan politics came into play at all? Well, let me just speak about my case. Uh, I got great office reviews. I was not on any kind of uh, resignation list until November 15th of 2006, and that was just a few weeks after I received two very inappropriate calls by two members of Congress, uh, Congresswoman Heather Wilson and Senator Pete Domenici. They called me and asked me inappropriate questions about alleged corruption matters. When you say alleged corruption matters, what exactly do you mean? Well, what I can tell you is in the local media here, there was widely uh, reported stories about uh, further corruption cases. You have to understand that uh, my office successfully completed the biggest corruption trials in New Mexico history in September of 2006. And uh, there were rumors rampant, the media picked up on it, that there were further corruption indictments coming. And uh, there was a tight race for Congress going on here. The focus of the uh, race for Congress between Wilson and her challenger was corruption, who was doing what, who wasn't doing what. So when I received my call in mid-October, uh, the question was asking me about sealed indictments. Those are matters that are absolutely prohibited for a prosecutor to speak about until they are unsealed. Can you explain, Mr. Iglesias, in, in simple language, why you believe uh, they fired you? I believe I was fired because I did not play ball with two members of the Republican delegation here in New Mexico. I did not give them privileged information that could have been used for partisan political reasons in the October and November time frame in, in the congressional race. And in fact, when Congresswoman Wilson and Senator Domenici called you, did you have any inkling that the pressure was on and this was coming? I had no idea. Uh, they had never contacted me previous about any, uh, any case like that. There was never any uh, phone calls, uh, no calls at home. And in the case of Senator Domenici, I was in my home uh, over a weekend. Uh, it came as an absolute shock when I received those phone calls. After you got the calls, what did you think? Well, not only did I, did I think something uh, bad had just happened in terms of uh, inappropriate pressure put on me to hurry up, and, and, uh, and drop the indictments, I actually, I actually felt physically sick. I felt uh, that sinking feeling in my stomach uh, after I got off the phone with the senator. Do you expect, Mr. Iglesias, more will surface about this scandal? I think that's probably right. Had somebody told me two weeks ago uh, where this case was unfolding, I, I, I would have been stupefied. Uh, I think uh, there's still more that needs to be done, and I, I applaud uh, Congress. Uh, I applaud the, the Senate uh, uh, subcommittees who are looking into this matter, uh, into getting down to, to, uh, to the brass tacks, so to speak, to figure out what's going on. Upon further investigation, what do you think will be revealed? Boy, I'd really hate to speculate, uh, but I can tell you that chiefs of staff who uh, work for uh, members of the uh, cabinet do not keep information to themselves. Their job is to relay information, to be conduits of information to their bosses, and I just cannot believe based on my experience in Washington, D.C., where I lived for five years, that uh, former Chief of Staff Kyle Sampson kept this information to himself. But you have said in the past, Mr. Inglesias, that you respect Attorney General Gonzalez, and you even asked his assistant if you could use the Attorney General as a job reference when it came, comes to looking for future employment. Do you still feel that way? Uh, I respect where he's come from. I respect the long uh, climb up from a very humble beginning in South Texas. I'm going to reserve judgment uh, as to whether or not he should resign. Uh, in fact, yes, I did ask his chief of staff for a uh, letter of recommendation for the simple purpose of finding out, is this really performance-based? Because if it was pr uh, based on my performance, they would have not agreed to, uh, to write a letter on my behalf. So it was a test. Uh, and that told me that performance was not the true issue, rather politics were. So if you had to say now, if you thought the Attorney General should resign, you would say you would like to reserve judgment on that? I would like to reserve judgment, and this is really a matter between the White House and Capitol Hill to work out. 
U.S. attorneys serve at the pleasure of the president. Do you believe the White House and the Justice Department were within their rights to let go of eight U.S. attorneys? Not under these circumstances. Uh, when they testified under oath in front of the U.S. Senate that uh, we had performance-based reasons, they knew or should have known that we did not. Uh, and that's a very serious matter to misrepresent in front of the uh, United States Senate. What will you do now? Well, I was planning on taking the month of March off and do as little as possible, but unfortunately that's not proven to be the case. Uh, I do, do not want to uh, involve myself in politics. I want to get in the private sector. Uh, I've got some military duty coming up next month, and I hope to land in the private sector sometime in late April. What does this tell you as a lawyer about the way the Bush administration operates? I'm just horribly disappointed in how the Justice Department handled this. You know, we're, we're supposed to be the good guys. We're supposed to be the ones telling the truth uh, and making sure justice is done. And how I was treated and how my uh, colleagues were treated is just unconscionable. I mean, all I want out of this, Katie, and I think my colleagues would agree, is all we want is a simple apology and thanks for service done. That's it. Do you think you'll ever get either of those things? Well, having worked for the government for most of my 22 years as a lawyer, uh, it's like pulling teeth to get the government to admit fault. Uh, uh, I personally drafted one letter of apology for the city of Albuquerque, but that was uh, very difficult. But it was the right thing to do, and, and we did it. What have you learned from this experience, you think? Well, I, what I learned from this experience was, uh, you know, rule of law means exactly that. Uh, I, I've learned that uh, U.S. attorneys desperately need to be free of politics, free of political interference, and that our discretion is paramount, that our discretion should never be substituted by, by uh, uh, inappropriate influence from members of Congress or special interest groups. Have you ever tried to reach Senator Domenici? No, I haven't talked to him since uh, his phone call in late October of 2006. What would you say if you could talk with him? It would take a lot of reflection uh, you know, prior to me answering that question. I, I, I really don't know.